Hey, it's David with Reray Outdoors. This time again, instead of doing an outdoor video, we are going to do not really a product review so much as a, a how-to, and maybe not so much as a how-to as a um, let's figure this out together. I've not installed one of these before, but this is a Samsung 970 Evo Plus. It's a one terabyte SSD drive. And as you probably know by now, not all SSD drives are created equal. Uh, and when I built this machine, uh, about almost exactly a year ago, uh, I, I spec'd it out based on uh, wanting a little bit higher performance machine for video editing because my old machine just wasn't cutting it, especially when working with a higher resolution or higher frame rate type video. Um, so I wanted something to handle that better. So uh, I ended up going with a, uh, an S a standard SSD drive. The one I have in here now is a Samsung 860 Evo, and it also is a one terabyte SSD but it's connected to my SATA channel. So it's a SATA SSD, and it is then uh, unfortunately limited by the channel performance of, of the SATA technology. So going to an M2 uh, NVMe uh, SSD product um, allows me to significantly uh, improve my read-write performance over even a standard uh, SATA type SSD drive, which of course even the SATA SSD is a significant improvement over your standard magnetic spinning hard disk drive, uh, which I also have in there. Um, but we are going to, to see what kind of a performance improvement we can get in general. Um, we'll run a benchmark on this. We'll run a benchmark on the SATA SSD. And we'll benchmark uh, my uh, other data drives in there, my other standard hard drives, one of which is a 7200 RPM and one is a 5400 RPM. So we'll get a really good sort of feel for what the performance characteristics are for each of those. Now, your mileage may vary um, based on your, your machine. In fact, make sure before you run out and buy one of these, since they are more expensive than a SATA SSD of, of a similar capacity, you gotta make sure your motherboard supports this. Now, in this case, this is an Asus uh, Republic of Gamers. It's a, it's a uh, Strix Z370E gaming motherboard. Now that 370, the Z370 refers to the Intel chipset that is uh, at the heart of this particular motherboard. Now, multiple manufacturers produce um, motherboards with this particular chipset. So presumably those motherboards would also be compatible with the NVMe M2 technology. So if you plan on putting this in an existing machine without building one from scratch, you absolutely need to make sure that you check your motherboard specs, check the manual, and make sure you understand what the considerations are and compatibility is with this particular type of SSD card. Now, before we go and install this, let's take a look at the BIOS settings on this particular motherboard and ensure that we understand with the current installation uh, where I have multiple hard drives in here, what settings I need to set and anything else I might need to change in order to make sure that I'm successful getting this to work with the system at its maximum speed without interfering with my other current hard drive. So let's get inside, take a look at the BIOS. So we are going to Go ahead and restart this machine. And this particular BIOS requires me to hit F2 on boot up. So I'm gonna start pressing F2 repeatedly while it's booting to ensure I don't miss my window. I feel like you could never press it too many times. And it comes up into the BIOS. So you can see here, uh, I've got three different SATA drives. Uh, in the top slot, which is my system volume, I've got a Samsung 860 Evo one terabyte SSD drive, but it's running in SATA mode because it's a SATA drive. And so I'm not gonna get the kind of performance that I expect out of an out of a, a NVMe M.2 SSD. I've also got a four terabyte uh, Seagate drive here, standard hard disk drive running at 7,200 RPMs. That's in channel two. And then in SATA channel five, I've got a Western Digital, an older, I believe it's a uh, 5400 RPM, one and a half terabyte drive. So that's actually gonna be something, as you'll see in a moment, that I'm going to need to address in the configuration. So if I go to advanced mode, and then from here, I'll go to advanced again. And if I come down here into uh, onboard devices configuration, uh, you can see that in my M.2 section here, I've got a PCE, so PCI Express bandwidth configuration, and I can choose X2 or X4. 
Now, the new 970 Plus drive that I have is an X4 drive, and I want to optimize performance on that, so I want to take advantage of that X4 uh, technology. So if I'm going to change this item right here, if I highlight that, I'm going to change this to X4 mode. Now, a note just came up that we need to take close attention to here. You can set the M.2 socket to work under PCI Express X2 or X4 mode, but when it's in times 4 mode, uh, the SATA ports 5 and 6 are disabled. So if I just simply install this M.2 drive on my M.2-2 port, because I actually have two M.2 ports on this motherboard, and I have X4 enabled, it's going to disable the drive I currently have connected to that SATA 5 port. So I'm going to need to, when I put this drive in, move that 1.5 terabyte drive connector to a different SATA connector so I'm not on port 5. I'm not going to save this setting uh, right now because I don't want to disable that 1.5 terabyte drive uh, that's in that particular slot right now. So I'm just going to go out and know that I can exit and I will discard changes and let the thing reboot. All right. So now let's go uh, shut down the machine when it comes up and we will go move forward with the installation. All right, now we've got the machine all opened up so we can get in there and install this SSD drive. Let me just point out here, on this NVMe M.2, you notice here on the end, where the connectors are, there's a single notch. So it's a key notch to make sure you get it in the correct way. That corresponds obviously to your um, NVMe compatible M.2 uh, socket on your motherboard. Now, the non-NVMe M.2 formats will have two notches, and those are not as high speed as these um, single notch versions. So if we take a look inside here, I've actually got two of these M.2 sockets in this particular motherboard. Now I've got this one down here, and, and then I've got one over here underneath this shield, so I'd have to remove this shield to get to it. Now this one down here is uh, configurable in the BIOS. We can set it to run as either PCIe uh, port or a SATA port. You get to choose uh, whether you want to set it up for one or the other, or you can have it automatically detect. This one is a port that's dedicated specifically as a PCIe NVMe port. So this is the one that I'm going to use, but primarily <laughs> just because it's easier to get to. Uh, with this one, I'd have to take the video card out and then I'd have to take the uh, shield off and then peel the little thermal strip off the back of that before I put it all back together. So a lot more uh, hassle involved with using that port. So I don't need to use that one since this one is so easily accessible. So let's go ahead and install that chip. Very straightforward installation. Basically all you need to do is line up the connectors with the socket and press it in firmly. Now you notice it sort of sprung up on the one end Right, so they, as you come down there, are these little standoffs, if you can make those out, little standoffs here on the right side of the chip. Okay, and so you need a screw to put that down to hold it in securely and make sure it doesn't slip out of the socket. Um, that screw typically comes with your motherboard. So I'm going to use a, actually another standoff that did come with the motherboard. This isn't probably the intended screw for this particular application, but I'm going to take a crack at it since I know that it fits that particular thread anyway. Put that in. Make sure it's snug. And voila, there it is. That is literally all there is to it in terms of physically installing it. So next, since we found out when we looked at the BIOS originally uh, that one of my hard drives was sitting in a uh, SATA socket that was going to probably be disabled when I enable the X4 option for this guy, uh, I need to move that drive. So let's let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So this, I tracked it back, is the cable connector that is um, attached to my Western Digital. So I believe these are my six SATA channels and that this is probably five and six. So I'm just going to move this guy over to one of these empty channels over here and that'll leave this uh, lane open to enable the, um, the 4X on the M.2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, 
All right, cool. So I've got that um, old Western digital hard drive moved over to a different channel. I suspect it's SATA channel three or four. It doesn't really matter. It's just an open SATA channel that is not five or six. Cool. So now let me button this thing back up. Uh, we'll power it back up and take a look at the BIOS and get our settings right. All right, got the thing all powered up. You can see here in the SATA information that the Western Digital Drive, that 1.5 terabyte, is now showing on uh, SATA channel three. So three or four is what I wanted. I needed to make sure that five and six were clear. So now we're gonna come down and go to our BIOS Advanced Settings and then click Advanced again. And we're gonna look at our onboard devices configuration. So we're still in X2 mode. I'm going to go to X4 mode. So uh, that should be all I need to do. So let's click on exit. And we will save changes. All right. We are booted back up. Let's take a look at my computer to see what shows up. So this is the Samsung S SE, the four terabyte and the um, and the one and a half gig uh, Western Digital. So let's go into our control panel and let's look up disk. And I think we'll choose create and format hard disk partitions. All right, so we're getting a prompt here. You must initialize a disk before uh, the logical disk manager can access it. So it says disk three. I think we'll just uh, leave it on the default for the master boot record. Yeah, so if we scroll down here, we can see after my one and a half terabyte uh, Western Digital, I've got this uh, unallocated um, drive here. So I'm gonna click on that and say uh, new simple volume. I'm gonna use the entire space and we can assign a drive letter. Let's see, I'm currently using C for my system drive, I for my backup drive, and D for data. So E should be fine. Actually, I'm gonna use this primarily for video. So I'm gonna assign drive letter V for video. And we are gonna format this volume and we'll just call this video editing. We'll go ahead and do a quick format, and we are not going to use compression on this guy. All right, so since we use quick format, it should be ready to go. All right, let's take a look again, and it should show up now. We've got our terabyte drive here for, for video editing. So we'll benchmark all four of these drives and see how we do. Okay, now that we've got this NVMe drive up and running, let's take a look at the actual benchmark results. I used a freeware application off the, uh, the Windows Store called Crystal Diskmark, and I used version 6.0.2. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward to use. Now this 5400 RPM Western Digital Drive, my oldest one in the system, um, on a sequential read-write test, you know, it only averaged you know, six, 76 to 73. And if you step that up to a 7200 RPM drive, uh, we a little bit more than double that up to 180 read and 172 megabytes write. And we can jump up again a pretty significant amount by going to the SSD drive, even if it's a SATA drive, and we'll more than double the 7200 RPM read write speed at 558 and 525. But look at this speed on the NVMe drive, just orders of magnitude higher. If you look at that number, that's 3.3 gigabytes per second. It's phenomenal. I charted it on uh, an Excel plot here, and you can just see visually the difference is pretty profound. Now, this is just a sequential read and write performance test, but it's a pretty good indicator of the performance, relative performance difference uh, between the, the, uh, the four different drive technologies. So, and looking at this, the comparison of the NVMe SSD versus a conventional pretty high-end 7200 RPM standard hard drive is over um, almost 1900 percent faster in a sequential read and write performance so pretty amazing stuff 
Okay, so I hope you got from this that that was a pretty easy process to install. Just do your homework and make sure that your hardware supports this NVMe technology uh, and you will get dramatic read-write uh, performance increases in your, uh, in your disk storage. I, uh, from a video editing standpoint, you know, I think the, the results are maybe less dramatic. Um, certainly during the editing process when you're looking at your, um, uh, your preview video, uh, preview seems to be uh, a lot more cooperative with higher frame rates um, than it did uh, with uh, on a standard SATA SSD. Um, it was still usable, but it's even better now. Um, from a rendering performance standpoint, um, there's not a dramatic difference. Most of that uh, burden is put on the processor, I believe, so that really becomes sort of the, the chief constraint, more so than the hard drive speed uh, from a rendering standpoint. So you might get you know anywhere from five to ten percent improvements in uh, rendering times, but um, I wouldn't buy the NVMe uh, SSD um, specifically in hopes to get a dramatic improvement in rendering times, because I, don't, I think you'll be disappointed if that's the primary reason you're buying it. So hopefully you found the video helpful, and uh, please give us a like if if you did. And um, if you like outdoor videos and things like that, stick around, uh, subscribe, and, and uh, we have lots of that up now, and we got more coming. So um, appreciate you taking the time to watch the video, and we'll see you in the next one.